the plasma membrane of a cell has receptor tyrosine kinases. Whenever the growth factors like PDGF and EGF are present in the extracellular space, they bind to the receptor tyrosine kinases. This growth factor binding causes receptor aggregation or clustering. This receptor aggregation or clustering forms a dimer. In this dimer, the tyrosine kinase associated with each receptor phosphorylates tyrosine amino acid of its neighboring receptor. This is called as cross-phosphorylation. Due to this cross-phosphorylation, the receptor tyrosine kinases become active. The active receptor tyrosine kinases triggers simultaneously the RAS pathway and other pathways. Now let us take an example of other pathways triggered by active receptor tyrosine kinases that is PI3K AKT pathway. In this pathway, first the inactive PI3 kinase comes in contact with the phosphorylated tyrosine kinases found in the active receptor tyrosine kinases. As a result, the inactive PI3 kinase becomes active. The plasma membrane of the cell has signaling lipid called as PIP2. The active PI3 kinase then catalyzes a biochemical reaction in which the PIP2 is added with a phosphate group and forms PIP3. PIP3 recruits protein kinases to the inner surface of the plasma membrane. This recruitment leads to the phosphorylation of an inactive protein kinase called as AKT. Due to this phosphorylation, the inactive AKT becomes active. The active AKT then catalyzes the phosphorylation of several key target proteins. As a result, the active AKT inhibits both apoptosis and cell cycle arrest. Thus, the net effect of PI3 AKT signaling is to promote cell survival and proliferation. The PI3 AKT signaling pathway is inhibited by an enzyme called as PTEN. The PTEN catalyzes a biochemical reaction in which the PIP3 is converted into PIP2. The PIP2 blocks the phosphorylation and activation of active AKT. As a result, the active AKT becomes inactive. The inactive AKT then stimulates both apoptosis and cell cycle arrest. Mutations that reduce PTEN activity are found in up to 50% of prostate cancer, 35% of uterine cancers, and to varying extents in ovarian, breast, liver, lung, kidney, thyroid, and lymphoid cancers. Please like, subscribe, and share.